this um, wheel with the five little holes in it, uh, there's arms going on both sides of that, and then that's the, the magic lever for the winding system on it. And then it has the big, the big mainspring, so I don't know how they've done this, but it looks like a mismatch of designs and, and existing parts. And we'll get into some of the other ones that, they've, that I've seen something similar. One I just showed in this other video, I have the Chinese tourbillon. The, the tourbillon brand, tourbillon. I don't know if this is aping a, like a JLC or a Patek with the sky background on it, but again, it's you see the same uh, Novodiac looking shock protection in the center. And this is based, uh, what was I going to say? Um, the Ada base on that. This is. If I look at the back, let me let me take the strap off of here. So this is also quite nice. Uh, this was six hundred dollars Canadian. This is a very inexpensive tourbillon. Uh, skeletonization. What they've done is instead of just leaving the the rough um, parts like you see on e like every single standard entry level. Uh, watch movement from the Swiss, like you look at a standard grade, undecorated 2824, you know, you see little scratches and stuff like that, just as, you know, it's just nickel plated brass without any decoration or polishing. Seiko does it too, Miyota does it too, the basic Chinese do it, but this one, what they've done is they've probably mass polished it, and by, the, by what that means is in, in the industry you just throw them in a big bin and it's either like a vibration tumbler and just polish everything up and it's not like but you know it looks good uh, the other thing that I noticed is the click there is a unitas style click so again I'm wondering if they're they're using like a core of um, a unitas like a 6497 clone as their basis of their parts and then they put their own tourbillon in this but this is a very nice tourbillon I, I think this is better than the seagull tourbillons but um, $600 looks good unfortunately usually I've seen these in uh, Moser homages so they're like a lot of the good work that they do in China and their movement design and their watch design seems to go towards creating uh, counterfeit or homage style watches. This is a really good tourmillon, but I see it in a lot of um, uh, Moser, and you know they just do the smoked dial without any 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 branding on it. This one, like I said, I don't know tourmillons enough to know if this one is actually copying something else, like a like a JLC or Patek, but the quality is much much better and the the execution is much better too they usually have on the low grade Chinese movements they have this these weird stripes um, this is a uh, mystery um, Unitas clone uh, it's not technically Unitas, it's a Panerai clone um, this bridge style was based off of the one that's in Panerai, and it's, this isn't something that uh, shows up in the video very well. This one with the swan neck over here is a really high grade uh, Ada 28, uh, 20, fuck, 6498. And see the stripes going and it has perlage underneath the balance wheel which you don't see on the more common with the wider stripes um, but you can't so it has it has the effect on the Chinese ones but from what I've seen they seem to be stamped like they're very very prominent like you can run your fingernail across them and go zip the Swiss ones are much much finer 
and I think these might be stamped in, and these are still done with uh, the abrasive abrasive bits on them. But again, like they did a decent job of this, but its purpose is to go into fake Panerais. Like this is a, a bridge pattern that Panerai developed because Panerai got criticism for putting base Unitas in. They're like, oh no, no, no it's different. Uh, but it's still Unitas, just different bridges. It's a common, common thing with uh, proprietary in-house movements. Um, Weiss, Unitas base. Uh, the only thing Weiss does, he moves the click from here to here. RGM, Unitas base. Um, a lot of the high end, not high end, but uh, fancy Germans like Dornbluth, Unitas base. Panerai, Unitas base. Um, yeah, it's easy to work on. And from that point of view, oops, <laughs> dim man, dim man horologies, Unitas base, three quarter plate, three D printed, three sixteen ounce stainless steel. So, back to the boat area. They are. It's hard to say, like how what. what place the, the these have right they have they have potential they're showing improvements in what they can do with the chinese movements you know was reliability be going to be an issue is servicing going to be an issue uh hard to say right they've put effort in their branding based on all of their their box and papers and boutique bag and everything like that it's a roger dubuis look but not super copying rod I don't know but again this is a hundred fifty dollar watch the the what they the question is 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 if they doubled the effort and made a three hundred dollar watch or, or quadrupled the effort and made a six hundred dollar watch would people actually buy it at six hundred dollars um, with their own branding you know, if if they another well another criticism was this Bodari thing. I, I I have no idea what Bodari comes from, but like there's obviously potential there for the Chinese to make really good watches for the, um, reasonable prices. Like they should be they should be going after like anything underneath Omega. They they have the potential to do it, but they just never do. Right, they make oh here's an we have to compete on cost so here's this inexpensive um, Bodari brand. So, but would I wear this instead of um, an SKX? No, because it's it's a fashion watch. It's kind of weird. It's hard to read. Is this something I'm going to show off? It's 150 bucks. Who cares, right? Like the execution's okay. It's it's fantastic for 150 dollars. But it's not great, you know? So would people buy a great execution of a Chinese brand, say, call it like Xi and Cao, just picking two um, Chinese names, for example. Say we have uh, Xi and Cao, and they're two guys, and they, you know, in China, and they want to compete with high-end stuff would people buy it the potential to increase this value is here right is this enough though and then the other thing is is as quality goes up the you have the diminishing returns issue even with the less expensive uh, labor costs and good manufacturing it still gets more expensive for less quality as as things get closer and closer to to perfection right you have that scale so to to me this watch is it's very very good it's superb dollar value but it's still not great you know it's still not a good watch yet so it's it's yeah you know, that's puzzling it's um like I said, one of the things that bothered me when I wind the crown, it actually scrapes off. It's sharp enough to scrape off. You know, I work in manufacturing. I got kind of callousy hands, and it scrapes off skin. 
you know it's like okay well next step is to to run you know when they cut this out on cnc run a run a bevel around you know and some anglage or some angles all around the profile but now we have another step and that adds cost uh then they got to polish it and make sure that you know you don't have a burr rolling over when you when you cut that you got to make sure you know this all the stuff that adds more and more money and i think it's a matter of whether or not you know the, the greater public will accept a um a high-end Chinese brand and I don't know if that's the case yet and part of the part of the problem too is, is distribution and service and all that stuff right this is an online brand um, does does having a physical presence make a difference you know I don't I don't know and some people would like to you know hold these things put them on first um, have a problem they'd rather take it into a place and say hey can you fix this for me and that's a lot of thing that these these chinese internet brands don't don't do is they don't have a service service type network this is in, in all things they don't have a of spare parts availability and all that other stuff but and again all doing all that stuff adds a tremendous amount of cost to um to the whole thing, right? Your service network's got to be divided by what your expected sales is, and having that cost applied to each watch that could add up, you know. So they're 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 interesting. They're not there yet, as far as I'm concerned. But they, this is a massive improvement um, than where they were like even five years ago. All right, that's fucking half an hour. Let's let's shut her down later.